Ah, I muted it. Welcome back to Arc Knights. Um, today, well, I say today, but for this video, um, I am going to be pushing into RS-6. I'm gonna be honest right off the bat, I have played a little practice runs of it, a couple practice runs of it. We'll see if I'll be able to beat it though, when I actually play it. I was able to beat it with three stars, so I know I'm capable of doing it. But I don't know what I did different that made me get three stars. Another new room. I don't know what I did that allowed me to beat Doctor. it. Let's just find out. Oh, and when I do a practice run, it forces me to read the story. I just skipped it. I haven't read it yet, so I have no spoilers as to what's about to happen. Rosalind's a rotten girl. We don't want to play with her. She's a freak without a papa. Oh, that's fucked up. Rosalind's a rotten girl without a papa. I'm not a rotten girl. I won't let you call me that. Yeah, she hit us first. She's a bad kid. Go, let's get her. Get her. If you want to fight, you'll get one. I'm not scared of you. Damn, she's beating the shit out of some kids. I'm not a bad kid. I'm fine with just my mamochka. I don't need a papa. I don't need a... Well, that's fucking sad. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. Huh. Didn't expect I'd fall at first into them. The trees. They were here all along? Two trees growing into each other. This has to be them. Okay, that should do it. Now that mom's business is done, I'll... Gah! Nope, can't climb back up. Snow's too thick and the hill's too steep to make it back up with my bare hands. Uh, there's only this cliff here left to try. Oh, wait! Rosalind! Uh-oh. Here's the papa. <laughs> Get away from there. It's dangerous. Okay, okay, I'm getting away. You stay put too. You can't move your legs, right? Just take a rest and don't push yourself. Just a scratch. Not like I'd ever let you fall. Those Victorian bastards actually dragged you into their plans. I won't let them get away with it. So that guy is really a Victorian spy? He will. He didn't actually do anything to me. <laughs> It'll be too late when he does. I'd have beat him so badly he wouldn't dare to set foot in El Roche to land ever again. If only we didn't have such bad luck. Before he came out of nowhere, I was gonna about to tie the bastard up and teach him a lesson. Whatever. Let's just drop it. Back there, you. Ugh, I hate it when people take their sweet time beating around the bush, so I'll just ask. Why did you move to protect me when we fell? And that Victorian guy, what was he talking about? Something to do with who somebody is? Rosalind, I know you might find what I'm about to say hard to accept, but... Tatiana and I, your mother and I, met in the summit of this mountain. You and Momochka... You mean your... That's right, Rosalind, you're my daughter. I fucking knew it. <laughs> And then it switches to Megan Brecker? Or NCO's? Oh, her. What was her name? Rotados? A most unusual guest. What business has you hurrying here today, Rotados? You must know exactly what it is, NCO's. Are you sure we can fool that Victorian Trilby Asher with our bait? The smarter our man is, the more confident is in his own judgment, correct? That's for sure. But NCO's, here's a warning for you, too. Don't underestimate people. That Victorian spy seems to be pretty misled. He's chasing Arctaz's daughter, all right, but I don't think that things are going to keep going that smoothly. What if he doesn't go according to our plans? How are we going to handle that? You must have some sort of backup plan. Arctaz's daughter deciding to return to Cherig now is indeed outside the scope of our plans. Of course, I couldn't possibly think such an improvised plan would suffice to solve our problem. Sounds like you have something up your sleeve. Let me see. Why haven't I seen Gnosis today? The bodyguard always is at your side. I heard that from my sister and brother-in-law. She hasn't, hasn't been helping you train your Jogata again. You get that? Here you got your information fast, Rotatos. Rhinosis and Degenbrecker naturally have their own jobs to do, and if you're here to see them today, I'm afraid you'll have to leave disappointed. I'm not looking for them. Although, ah uh, yes, I had a piece of 
Good news for Gnosis if he was here. Oh? Nothing major. You'll know about it tomorrow. He said this before, but I personally remind you... I'll personally remind you, NCOs. You'd better be certain of the things... Of the things happening below Terragonzer's statue. It's not just about one clan Silver Ash. You'd do well to remember that us Brown Tails also have a stake in it. It's etched into our mind. Into my mind. Whether it be the Tri Clans or the Vine Bear Court led by the Saintus, Rotados, you should hold a little bit more confidence. Whether it be you, being you, me, Gnosis, or even Degenbrecker, all that we do here is for Carrig's future. That is my firm belief. I mean, at least he's loyal to the country. <laughs> Trilby Asher! You're not going to escape her again. Run enough laps yet. She's just walking behind him. Yes. Also, I must retrieve my words from earlier, Madam Degenbrecker. What's coming to your clever little mind now? The Black Knight indeed does not lie. A brazen misunderstanding on my part. I thought young Lorena was a key to the plans unfolding in Kerrig. Were it not for that, I wouldn't have the slightest intention of establishing contact, and yet so many clues have appeared. Madam... You did not come to block me from approaching Arctaz or Rosalind. You're here to deepen the misunderstanding, yes? Done talking. Smart people always talk so much. I don't get why. I can't be bothered. Now pick up your weapon. Let me see how sharp Victoria's claws are. No, no, no. I surrender. <laughs> is there any need for us to fight? This is a complete misunderstanding. You were right. I should head down the mountain for lunch. The Trilby Asher calmly raises his hands and walks past Degan Brecker. But as his back faces hers, he suddenly stops moving. However, this is only a small little guess of mine, Madam Degenbrecker. To the best of my knowledge, Encio is not the one to act without purpose. If Madden Lorena is truly uninvolved, I believe he wouldn't use her as bait. She is certainly not suspicious. So could it be that the Palaroche clan is behind her? Could it be there's something amiss with the Palaroche spirits? Or rather, the transport route they arranged for the alcohol? Madame Lorena's appearance was an unexpected affair, and it is precisely because of that that you worry that once I meet her, I might just stumble upon Clan Paula Roche in the course of my investigation and discover something I shouldn't have. This is why you perform an entire show for me. Degenbrecker does not answer and merely raises her weapons slowly. The Paula Roches are in charge of transporting various resources from Kerrig, for Kerrig, and all transport railways in the country coverage and converge on the same spot. Lake still blah, 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 blah. To elaborate, what's important is the island is in the middle of the lake underneath the Karagander statue. Perhaps there are some secrets hidden there. Would an intelligence officer divulge his own answers? No. Everyone has their own strengths. For example, you'd be stronger than most of Victoria. However, you cannot control the subtle expressions you're not even aware of you're making. I believe my guess is correct. Degenbrecker wields her weapon with no mercy in mind, but the Trilby Asher is one step ahead of her. He dodges the blast waves and the snow flying everywhere, and her murderous intent as she leaps as he leaps down the mountain. Degenbrecker gives chase. Ooh! Some crazy shit's happening now. The Burden Beast observation car is about to depart for Lake Silver. Our professionally trained Burden Beasts can bring you to the every scenic spot and all the best views. Travelers who want to enjoy the spectacular vistas to on to on the lake way to the lake. To on the way to the lake. Okay. Don't miss the chance. I need to head over to Lake Silver. Give me your fastest burden beast. You'll have to pay extra for that, sir. Name your price. I'm currently being hunted by a sinister woman. So do me a favor, friend. If someone asks where I went, just tell them you don't know, alright? I've seen something like this before on those discs my daughter sent me. Whew. That's the one. Fastest girl I got. I need to take a breath, everyone. I need to take a breath, everyone, so I'm forgetting to. And don't worry, sir. My lips are sealed. Many thanks. The Trilby Asher nimbly jumps onto the seat of the Burden Beast's back. The beast begins to move and breaks into a run towards the lake. Foreigners are so funny. I'll have to tell my girl about this when she comes back. Have you seen a foreigner dressed in a black coat? It's really happening. Sorry, I didn't... Uh, Madam Deckenbrecker? You know me? Don't you remember? Well, I'm 
my talk talk me got stuck in the quagmire while transporting goods last year you happened to be passing by and pulled her out oh right that happened so you didn't see anyone right then wait hmm the bastard actually called you a sinister and i even let him borrow talk me oh i'm going to teach him a lesson for sure he picks up a transceiver talk me stop that's a bad guy <laughs> Burden Beast adaptability is not to be underestimated, but the crucial trait is its robust endurance. Perhaps it would serve as a strategic resource. Eh? The Burden Beast underneath him suddenly turns restless with impatience. Madam Dagon Wrecker, talk me's over there. Thanks. Gah! Have I been caught? Bloody. Gah. Give up already. I'll be watching whatever it is you're up to today. Even if my only desire is to see the local sites? I know Kiarig pretty well. <laughs> I can't be doing this. Ah. That's hilarious. I'm definitely learning how to ice skate today. You've been saying that for a month already, and summer's already on its way. You'll have to wait for a long, long time before the lake to freeze over. And that's why I'll definitely get it down today. Okay, okay. Sorry, I need to borrow these for a bit. But, hey, my skates! Here's some money for a new pair. During his thorough investigation of Kerrig, the Trilby Asher has seen many locals skating on the ice underneath the warm winter sun. He's thought that an activity like this would be somewhat enjoyable and has wanted to try it if he had time. An opportunity he unexpectedly presented itself to him. But soon, he discovers he made a gross misjudgment. Oh, um, thought you knew how to skate, man. He's obviously new, so unstable. Stable? Oh, I see. Gah, saw it. Move. Huh? Whoa, someone's flying in up from above. <laughs> Stability, balance. Right, yes, I've got it. With a loud bang, Dagon Brecker's attack smashes a gigantic hole into the icy surface. The trophy Asher dodges the blow in the nick of time. Wow, I got it down. How delightful. I'll definitely print up this for <laughs> after I return home. Of course, I have to survive the day first. <laughs> he, he actually learned how to skate? I've never seen someone get it down that quickly. Hmm. Is there a spare pair around? Why don't I lend you mine? Thanks. Do you? I do so fast of course she would know how to skate like come on start so i played a couple like i said i played a couple practice runs so i kind of have a strategy down oh Did the game just crashed no i kind Where of have a strategy eat? down it's not like a solid one that wins 100 at all Orchid feels fresh. Okay. Feels definitely your targets, doesn't it? And then summon her there. I have a visual. And summon Megan Brecker there. Something It'll else. be that way. Still mulling things over, Doctor Perfectionist. Thunderstorm. Ansel. Goes there, Please hold down. on. Any instructions? Ah! Use your weapon to tell me who you are. Okay, with that done, place her there. there we go. That way. And place her facing down. You want my conviction will throw you off the case. Of course she's facing the burden beast. Why would she not shoot the burden beast? Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Thunder roar! Come on. Come on. Yes. There. You really think you'll get yeah. away? Kill at the shooting star. That's what they say. And you One big two will throw you off the face. First aid box is ready. Fire! Barrage! Barrage! 
Go ahead. Stop them now. Yeah. Heaven's will. Still soaking us. Feels that to lose your target, doesn't it? Didn't work. But honestly, that's fine. I don't need a three star. I just need Heaven's to win. Lit. Thunderstorm. Don't be upset. You heal that wound in no time. Understood. Rock and roll. Yeah. Dragon Brecker needs to get her ability back quicker. Thunderstorm. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now next time it attacks, use Dragon Brecker to frighten them. Still, my conviction will throw you off the edge. There is no First aid box clear. You want my still talking yourself in the past? Nice. Okay, she killed it. Just activate it right away. Rock and roll! Charging! Sure you could spot. Still my conviction yes. will throw you off the case. No wait, you clicked the wrong character. Feels fresh. Thank you. Oh my Let's god. Pick up the pace. Rock and roll. And heal that wound in target locked. Thunder roar. That's it. No, it didn't work. Oh, that's so sad. Rock and roll. One bullet each. This is the place. What did I mess up? I think I messed up one thing. But I need to test to see if I'm correct in that. I think I was supposed to spawn lava and not, uh. I'll come with you. Not her. Let's see what. Lava. Oh, I can't even check. Okay. Nice, that's what it was. It wasn't excuse me, it was lava. Oh, that's what needed to be there. Go ahead. Oh come on! I already <laughs>
She's the only one that's at appropriate level. I will say that. She's the only one at evolve or a promoted level one promotion level one level 50 and which is like the requirement requirement obviously i have level 30s that just beat it it was more than 20 years ago i remember that winter was much okay so one second Remember that winter was so much colder than in previous years. The snow never stopped, and the wind was almost strong enough to blow you away. The weather was so bad, no one would willingly go outdoors. Everyone stayed inside with their furnaces lit from night day to night. There was always tea heating atop the stove from for convenient pick-me-ups. The burden beast sheds were especially reinforced before winter came, and the beasts huddled together, hibernating in groups. Time teams seemed to slow down in Carrig that year. Every passing day felt like a slog to go through, and yet the subsequent days would bring the same wind and snow. I was still young then, and I just couldn't bear to live that way anymore. I snuck out with a few men in tow that day, the plan to hunt in the mountains, but the snow overwhelmed us, and there wasn't a single target to be found. I got separated from the others halfway and could only continue ascending the mountain with all the effort I could barely muster. And then it was the here. I met Tatiana on this very spot. Oh, okay. Gah! What lousy weather today. Don't even have a single strand of meat beast hair on my hands. That's gonna call me a... Huh? What's that noise? Huh? Who's there? Enough with your tricks. Come out and face me with the guts. If you have the guts to... Ow! As if responding to Arctaz's words, a snowball falls from the tree. Branch up high and hits his head. A clear female voice rings from above. <laughs> right on target. Hey, I'm over here. Why didn't you hide, you big dummy? Y you Me? What about me? You're a funny guy. Did you think that you'd be able to hunt in weather this bad? Young man, I'll give you some advice on account for your handsome face. You should hurry home. Arctos raises his head. The snow and wind gradually subside, and bright rays pierce through the entwined branches of the trees before him, casting fragmented shadows on his face. A vaguely female figure seems to pop up from a patch of soft snow. Snowflakes scatter all around as she moves. The young Tatiana smiles as she looks down to meet the young man's gaze below. Arctos suddenly feels his eyes go dry. The snow white he's so used to is suddenly so dazzling. The sunlight was so bright that day. Oh. I fixed the thing. My cat's been tearing this thing apart a little bit, so it's not even even anymore. Like even in the slightest bit. She's so bad. She's so she's so cute, but she's so bad. Lady the cat, not Otto. Otto doesn't mess with it really. Lady, on the other hand, is a terror. Sentis, please have a look. The main body of Karagander statue is built by his brown tails. It stands about thirty meters tall, and the adamant <clears throat> adamant materials will be used to no risk of damage for the next century at the very least. Hundreds of the devotees volunteered to work together with professional craftsmen to carve out the statue's form you see today. So it surely is the most accurate reconstruction of Karagander there is. <laughs> Although everyone is arguing about whether Karagander should be humanoid or not, that Borish Arctaz even nearly got into a fight over it. But I guarantee you, from today onwards, the statue will be the most eye-catching attraction in Karag. Mm-hmm. Thank you for all the hard work. <laughs> God. The statue is the best symbol Kiara can show to the outside world, and it couldn't have happened without everyone's efforts. Karagander will certainly be pleased as well. <laughs> Especially with you and your sister, Madame Skurus. 
I've heard the both of you have spent a lot of effort on the construction and practically stayed on site until it was completed. It must have been difficult. <laughs> it wasn't much, just doing our jobs. Besides, it's much easier than being forced to study. Study? No, no, nothing. <laughs> well, then, uh, Green Satis, uh, allow me to give you a tour. Please follow me. That's funny. Saintus, preparations for tomorrow are complete. You should return to Mount Carlin. You are nagging me again, Kiar. It's rare I get to leave the mountain, so let me stay for a bit longer. Or are you trying to advise the Saintus on how she should act, just as the elders do, Kiar? I won't ramble away like they do. Your gravitas <laughs> only continues to increase, and there is no one to stop you from descending Carlin anymore. Yesterday, you came down to meet Encios personally. If this happened in the past, the elders would have already raised a swift objection. They merely fear that I, the Saintus, will have my personal inclinations. But it is precisely because there is no one controlling me that I cannot hold any bias. And I don't have any personal biases either. Whether the people here or in the eyes of others, I must represent the whole of Kyrg as Saintus, and not any specific faction or clan. Saintus, even though NCOs and I don't actually have conflicting opinions on many matters, and can agree on many issues regarding Kyrg, it doesn't mean we can all be as close as we were, let alone treat each other as siblings. I can't do that, and neither can he. That's so sad. It also includes my own emotions, but it is not just about that. So I thank you for preparing our meal yesterday, Kyar. But you... You need not do that again. Enya, is it really alright to continue like this, Enya? Even though you're representing Kerrig now, there are still many who only know the, of Carlin trade. Clan Silver Ash has already started to dip their fingers in every facet of the country, and will only continue to grow stronger in the future. I have some thoughts on that. What's important right now is to develop Kerrig as fast as we can. Some matters are just unavoidable, and or things I let slide. We still need entities like Carlin Trade, after all. Besides, I'm fine with Enciodes keeping himself there for the time being. But won't it be dangerous to continue like that? That's why I have my own plans. <laughs> She's doing like a derpy face. Like the little three. You mean the new school you've been in charge of for the past few years? And the reforms over the Vine Bear Court? <laughs> it's fortunate I realized how many so we have so many wise people here compared to a Keurig with the voice of the soul of Saintus or the single clan at Silver Ash wouldn't it be better to have a Keurig with a myriad of voices of Keurigander's people it's the same as prayer didn't you say that making your wishes out loud instead of keeping them in your heart would let Keurigander hear them in earnest I hope more people will get the chance to voice their hopes in Keurig this is what I wish for, my prayer to Karagander. Well, that's a good wish indeed. It will certainly reach Karagander. That's great to hear. Will you help me, Kiar? Of course. Didn't we agree as much already? I'm your maid, after all. Thank you, Kiar. If you really want to thank me, why not... Huh? Oh dear. They're headed this way. Kiar? Is someone headed our way? Yes, with an aggressive aura to boot. They're fast. They're heading here... It feels like a fight is about to erupt. Will there be any issues if they happens near the statue? Who knows? Anyway, you should return, Grey Saintus. We also need to send someone to inform Madame Sirius of our, as well. It'll be bad if you or someone else gets hurt. I see. What about you? I will say. If something happens, uh, it would be terrible if something happened to damage... <laughs> it would be terrible if something happened to damage Karagander's statue. So let me stay here to keep an eye on things, and I'll make sure nothing big happens to the statue. Char. Hold on, you can't be... Hmm? Oh, they're here! I'll say no more. Saintus, I have to go watch them. Hey, Char. She's gone. She's definitely... Opportunity to do a little something to the statue. <laughs> She's gonna destroy the face so they have to remake it. Is she that unsatisfied with the statue's face? <laughs> oh, that's good. 
Oh, that's funny as fuck. Oh, uh oh. This part's easier to walk in without and as many trees around. Careful, the snow ahead is pretty deep. Hey, you are you really my papa? I mean, Momochka said. Tatiana mentioned me. What did she say? Not much. I didn't even know I still had a papa until I was grown. Thought he might have died long ago. That's sad. I thought that there. That was the reason she never mentioned a father, and she never really brought up Kerrig before, either. We've been just the two of us for all those years. I never thought... Really? Maybe she, she still resented me. As she should have. After all, I was the one who let the both of you back down back then. I deserve her resentment. It seems Tatiana lived a good life, even without me. That's sad. Before I came here, she told me how to so feels different in Kerrig. That's so sad. Sad. The snow you find on the mountain summits is different from the snow down here. She told me Kerrig is my home too. That even though I grew up in Ursus, I was born here. Tatiana. That sure is something she would say. She liked the summit snow so much and always told me how different it was. It's a pity a thug like me didn't get it back then. <laughs> I don't get it either. But I remember she told me I might have forgotten what happened when I was small, but those experiences don't just disappear. She always said everything you've been through will always be shaping you as a person. That's also a true statement. Even if you forget it, its influence remains. She said the Rosalind of today is, has every stage of her life to thank. And even the little insignificant things that happened in between have also greatly contributed to who I am today. And that's why, even if she couldn't make it here, she hoped that I could at least know a part of me came from Kerrig. That's what she said, and that's why I'm here. Tatiana. When your mother and I first met here, we... You could say it was a mutual attraction. It didn't take long for us to fall in love. I hoped to marry Tatiana and spend the rest of our lives together. I really was looking forward to it. I've never wanted anything as much as I did to be with her. But thanks, that was no easy feat in Carrick back then. But why? If you liked each other, then just stay together. It can't get any simpler than that, right? Yes, you should have been. It should have been the simplest thing to do. But Rosalind, you don't understand Carrick. At least the way Carrick was two decades ago. We're still secluding ourselves in our little corner of the land. And basically had no contact with outsiders. You don't get catastrophes in Kerrig. And everyone just thought it was thanks to Kerrig under protecting her people. We believed the place was sacred, unlike the outside world where catastrophes were commonplace. I've always believed Kerrig back then was quiet and peaceful. But the way things are now, I have to admit, we were closed off and blind. Our lives were just farming, herding, and praying to Kerrig under. Outsiders were rare to see, and we weren't exactly friendly to them either. So Momochka, you know her best, I'm sure. Tatiana was so passionate, frank, ostentatious, ostent ostentatious, and didn't bother to fit in. She captivated me completely, but at the same time, she was too strange and too different for Kerrig then. Hmm. So are you trying to tell me you held back because of that? You didn't dare to marry a foreigner? Wait, where'd I come into the picture then? <laughs> where'd I come into the picture then? You had me without marrying her? I'm serious, Beardy. You better not be joking. Rosalind, wait, uh, don't be hasty. It's not what you think. It didn't happen like that. Easy now. Then what happened? I... <coughs> of course married your mother. Any, many objected to it, but it ultimately wasn't an impossible task. After all, the head of Clan Silver Ash married a foreigner too. My marriage would have been an embarrassment for the Polarosh clan, but I still managed to convince my father, our patriarch at the time, to go through with it. You met him already, Rosalind. It was him who brought you to my home yesterday. Brought you back home yesterday. Even though I was so drunk I didn't recognize you at all. I mean, that old man? Is my grandfather? Yes. I appreciate... Okay, just making sure it's a little recording. I appreciate that he ultimately let us marry and kept it a secret from the outsiders, too. One of my biggest regrets is not inviting more guests to our wedding, but Tatiana told me it was fine, that she didn't care about the informalities as long as we loved each other, nothing else mattered, as long as we could be together for good. And then, we had you. 
The days I spent together with you two were the best I could ever have imagined. But our good times didn't last long. The Silver Ash couple got into an accident soon after you were born. Kerrig was already in a state of turmoil due to the Silver Ash reforms, and there were many who regarded them as a thorn in their side. Most didn't dare to challenge the Tri-Clan leaders directly, but attacking a foreigner in private was much easier to do. They said it was an accident, but truth be told, it was far from that simple. I don't know much about it, but I remember the doctor telling me that the Paula Roches are conservative. So Clan Paula Roche must have been against the reforms too. Yes. I'm not trying to lecture you now, Rosalind, but there are some who... Some things you have to have the right to know. Jesus. I just took my medicine, so I'm burping a lot. I'm sorry. It was beneficial for the Paula Roches to suppress the Silver Ashes then, and I alone could not have changed our decision to do so. So, we Paula Roches are the most devout believers and guardians of Kiaragonder, while the Brown Tails are the astute followers who make sensible decisions. While the Silver Ashes had gone astray and tried to destroy our faith in vain, putting Kerrig in danger, this was how our three clans were seen back then, and also the way the situation really was in Kerrig. And I, as the next head of the Paula Roche clan, could not harm the family's interests. There was not much I could do. And so you abandoned me in Momochka? I did not. I never abandoned you, and there's no way I would have abandoned Tatiana. But those people... Would they be satisfied with a mere accident? The Silver Ashes were dead, and I married an Ursine woman. They didn't know how great Tatiana was, and didn't care for her affection towards Kerrig. She was just an Ursine woman in their eyes, an outsider representing Kerrig's doom. Rosalind, oh, I am a warrior. I've shed so much blood and have never feared anything, but back then, all I had were sleepless nights. Because I finally came to no fear. I was afraid. The best choice I can make at the time was to have you leave, to go far away from Kerrig. Even if we couldn't see each other again, I, even if I couldn't be by your side anymore, for I knew the two of you could live a normal and peaceful life somewhere at least. Instead of running into any strange accidents somewhere I couldn't see or even right under my own nose. So I wouldn't be left with just an accident. You... That's the story of me and Tatiana. Rosalind, I owe you and your mother too much. I, Arctaz, will never deny this. The warrior's weapon falls into the snow with a muffled sound. Arctaz takes out his poleaxe and throws it to his daughter's feet. Under the sun, it reflects both faces of the father and daughter on his blade like a mirror. Resent me. Blame me. I deserve it all. Berate me or even strike me with this axe. I won't budge. But then, can you give me another chance, Rosalind? I don't mean to make this difficult for you. I just wanted you to know I still love you both. I did then and I always will. My feelings towards you and your mother have never changed. So, if you're willing, Rosalind, could you call me father just once? Call you father? I, Rosalind. Go to hell! In your dreams! She's gonna beat the shit out of this old man! Huh? R Rosalind, so you talked yourself in circles for a whole day just for that? Huh? Didn't <laughs> didn't want to make things difficult for me? You even threw down your rotten axe because you're so sure I wouldn't use it to cut you open, huh? No, that's not what I... I don't care what you meant. It sounds so neat, convincing your family to let you marry, being forced to make us leave. Huh? You think I'm dumb? All I could think of hearing your story is how my watch got dealt with it all. You left her all alone in a hostile environment for so many years, and she even raised a kid for you. She will- This is so sad. I didn't mean to click that. She willingly put herself in danger, even with her life on the line, but you telling me in the end all she could do was leave? This is a really pretty art piece for such a sad scene. And the sun is really bright. <laughs> Have you ever considered why she and Ursine had to endure being treated like that in your Kerrig? My Momochka loved to go on adventures. She liked to try new things. She liked to explore anywhere she could. She could never stay in one place for too long. 
She loved making friends, loved shopping, loved to eat all sorts of food. Could your Keurig from 20 years ago even satisfy any of that? Do you care about any of these things at all? Why does it sound like you're the only character in your story with nothing else? You said she's passionate and she's frank, but I couldn't tell you we're talking about Tatiana. I'm not even gonna... Yevgenyevna Lorena at all. You're happy as long as you're... You're happy as long as you have your wife and daughter by your side? Huh. I'm blown away that you actually had the guts to say that. Tatiana. It was me. It was my... It's too late for tears. Do you know what life in Ursus was like for us? Living peaceful lives somewhere? That's enough for you? Bullshit! Do you know just how many people were talking behind our backs while Mamachka was raising me on her own? You couldn't. I grew up without a papa. Do you know how popular fatherless kids are at school? You were bullied? They dared? Save it. No one dared bully me. But listen, it had nothing to do with you. It was thanks to my fists. Even General Zima helped me more than you ever did. Ever since I was small, I knew I had to rely on myself because I didn't have a papa. I knew I had to count on my fists to sh shut, to shut up those cowards who only knew how to use their mouths. Do you know how many fights I got into growing up? <laughs> how could you even? Rosalind, I... Do, you don't have to speak. It's pointless anyway. I just wanted to tell you, I don't care whether you were compelled by Kirk's circumstance or were trying to bear whatever burdens you had. Since, you, since you've since you been missing from our lives for over a decade, there's no need for you to step up now. My papa failed to show up back when I was still wanted one. And now, I don't need one anymore. You're still hoping I'll forgive you? Still hoping to use me as a bridge to reconnect with my Mochka and have her forgive you too? Dream on! No, I wouldn't dare make such an unreasonable demand. But I, I just wanted to do something for you. No, hold on. Rosalind, what did you just say? Have your mother forgive me? But isn't she, isn't your mother dead? You're cursing her too? Who told you she was dead, huh? But didn't you say you brought her remains back here and you've been using past tense? Right, remains. Rem remains? Uh, hold on. Let, let me check. Uh, I mean, what was it? I brought a, back a token of hers? Man, the Keurig language was just hard as hell. I know my pronunciation's a little off, but the tenses might be hard. But is that bad? Tatiana's alive? She doing well? Super well. She broke her leg in a fall right before our trip. That's why I'm here on my own. But what happened in Chernabog a few years ago? Forget it, you wouldn't even understand, even if I told you. I'll keep it short. I ran into some trouble a few years ago, and Ramochka ran straight into a catastrophe to find me. I was pretty lucky to get rescued back by Rhodes Island, but she contracted oropathy. She was in Chernabog when it was exploding? How could that... So where do you live now? Rhodes Island? Right? They can treat or oropathy. So, are you two staying with them now? Are they treating you well? I know the doctor there. Right, right. I'll get into contact right away. Give me a break. You can't possibly know the doctor better than I do. Whatever. We'll pick this back up later. Another word and I'll lose my temper again. What's important now is to find the way out of here. And it's no good to let the Victorian run around either. Actually, I came up with an idea that was going to tell you about, but you interrupted me. What? How do we get out? Over there. You stand on that spot. But Rosalind, that's just a cliff, huh? Of course I know that. Little stands behind the man claiming to be her father. She raises the leg again and kicks him in the back without a shred of hesitation. Artas, completely unaware, only has a split second to look at her as the startled expression before his figure slips and falls down the cliff. <laughs> ah! Rosalind, careful, it's... Oh. Damn, you're pretty loud. Stop yelling. You sound like I was going to end you. I took a look earlier, and the short drop wouldn't do much with all that snow below. What's wrong with you, Kierigs? 
do you guys not do any snow jumping here? Ah, uh, right. Hey, totally unhandsome beardy. <laughs> Don't forget to settle your child support for the past decade or so. I'll send the bill to your clan later. <laughs> that felt great. And now, hmm. I'd better tell the doctor and the rest of what happened here, just to be safe. <sighs> I was supposed to be a tourist here, though. What the hell am I doing? Oh, I got through. Doctor? Are you the here yet? Yeah, I'm fine. But there's something I need to tell you. Looking after everyone's health is my greatest motivation. That was fucking hilarious. I like that. That was so sad, too. What the fuck? It's like hits you in the field, then it's like, oh, okay, time to be happy. I don't even know what to say. Do thumbnail face. <laughs> that was some crazy shit. Oh my fucking god. I don't even know if it'll be possible. That was chapter RS6. Um, that Doctor, was. You know how busy your schedule is today, yes? Yes, ma'am. That was very hard to do. This place to is do. nothing like stagnant old Syracuse. Okay. The breath of hope flows here. What? Oh, she needs to rest. Okay, let's do that real quick then. Kotatsu. Kotatsu. Where's the Kotatsu? Okay. That was RS6. That was a lot of fun. I didn't expect to get hit in the feels, though. That was so sad. It was good, though. I think it was really good and really sad at the same time because I wasn't expecting. I don't know. I just wasn't expecting it to be mm. so sad. Looks like there's. I know it would be when it finally did have them to talk about the fact that they are related to each other. Like, I mean, she's the daughter. I knew it was going to be sad, but I didn't expect it to like actually make me like want to cry a little bit. And reading it out loud, at that, especially when it was getting closer to the end, it was hard. I didn't expect it to like make me want to cry. It was hard to read that out loud. I'm going to do a shit ton of Doctor. grinding. You know how busy your schedule is today, yes? Yes. Oh, let's see what I get. Watch out! Oh. Captain of Reserve Op Team A6. Orchid. Reporting in. Blah Okay. Popcar from Operation Reserve Team A6 reporting in. I'm sorry, my teammates are always Shut up! Hi. You scared the shit out of me again. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Huh? What am I supposed to do here? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I can't be louder. I, I know. The door. I said, Stephen. You scared the shit out of me. I will tell you that. It's not a scary game. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't be such a scary cat. Yeah, don't be such a scaredy cat. You're so nice to me. Always. Always so nice to me. <laughs> Ass. I love you. What? It's my birthday. It's a birthday girl, not an ass. Okay. That's the end of the video, so you liked it? Like and subscribe. I'd love to have you around. Um This was an intense episode. I barely even got through it. <laughs> I was almost not strong enough to get through it, actually. There is probably no way. I don't see any world where I am strong enough to do this. Which is sad, because I'm really loving the story and I don't want it to just stop now. But I have a feeling that I will not be strong enough to do it. 
I don't know. Unless I like whale. <laughs> like put like a hundred dollars in and like buy a bunch of shit in the store. But other than that, there's no way for me. There's no way for me to catch up and be able to finish that. <sighs> Which is unfortunate because that means that I have to unlock it later and finish it later. Uh, let's unlock this one. So I get one of these every week, someone said. Uh, every week on Monday. So, tomorrow. Wait, today. Oh shit, it's today. Okay, I got another one soon. Whatever. With that unlocked, I'll do this eventually. Let's see what it looks like. Oh. Oh. Okay. I'll be doing that probably once this event is over. Um, I'll be reading through all of it like I did with this event. Um, unfortunately, I do not see myself becoming strong enough in time to finish the event. Which sucks, because I am loving this story so much. And I really, 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 really want to see the end of it. That's all I can say, though, for now. So, you better... Oh, wait. Shit, right. Discord will be in the description. I have the link set now. Um, also, if you want to support the channel more, the, there's the Ko-Fi in the description as well. I don't remember now. Um, you better have a good night. And bye-bye!